I want to ask this. Uh, recently, Sean Spicer, uh, the president's first press secretary, returned to the press briefing room to ask a question for the news organization Newsmax. Was that strange for you and your colleagues to see someone uh, who had been behind the podium to be, you know, sort of sitting in the, the pen with you guys? It was definitely surreal because he, I think, is the first White House press secretary to then question as a member of the media um, the same president that he served. So it was very surprising. I will tell you a quick story. Because I literally clean everything like crazy, I was sitting next to Sean Spicer, but I was cleaning my chair so hard and so long that I literally did not realize that Sean Spicer was sitting next to me until he was like, hi. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's Sean Spicer. So I think that tells you what moment we're living in, that we're so crazy. I'm wiping down things with hand sanitizer and have to sit next to you and, and I'm sitting next to the, the former White House press secretary who's now a member of the media. We have a newly uh, former White House uh, press secretary joining the ranks. That's Stephanie Grisham, who in her time uh, having the job did not hold a single press conference. What do you think that says in regards to the strategy this administration seems to have with their uh, relationship to the press? Well, Stephanie Grisham never held a White House press briefing because President Trump, frankly, didn't want her to and didn't see a need for press briefings. And even when he now sees a need for press briefings, largely because this is the, the number one way that he's able to speak to the media and speak to the American people, um, that he now thinks it's, it's, a, it's an important thing. But I think it's, what it tells us is that the president understands media. He understands prime time. He understands how to choose what he's saying. So I think that it tells you that the White House briefing just wasn't important until he could no longer hold rallies and could no longer hold other kind of alternate medias. And this is the number one way that he's able to get coverage. There was a lot of talk of, you know, even before the last election, how do you cover a Trump rally? Is it the right thing to put it on television? unedited lives it's happening the same question now is being asked about these press conferences you know there are some media critics who don't think this should be on tv every night as someone who's in that room you know how what do you think is the right way to uh present those press briefings as they're happening so it's really not my job um, to figure out whether or not we cover them live. What I can say is that when I'm covering them, I try to add as much context and fact checking as possible because I think covering President Trump, I've learned you have to have context. You have to tell people, here's what the facts are, and here's when he's wrong, and here's when he's right. I think for people like myself who watch at home, uh, one thing we uh, enjoy to see, enjoy seeing, excuse me, is that sometimes the president will cut off a reporter without asking, uh, answering their question. And the next reporter will then follow up on behalf of their colleague who had the previous question. Do you wish that happened more? And in, do you think it's important for the press to, to be unified in those moments where, where one will get cut off? I think it's important to follow up on each other's questions for sure, especially because some of the questions that we're asking are the basic questions. The question is still, if you need a test, can you get a test? Will we have enough ventilators? What is the president doing to make sure that people are going to stay safe? When is the White House going to say, you know what, maybe the government can open back up and we can all go back to our normal not lives? How many people do we think are going to die? Those are basic questions that at times we're not getting answers to. So I think those questions can, can and should continue to be asked. This is obviously a case where the president has been aggressive with uh, all walks of life, as if they're journalists. Um, yet, it has been pointed out that he has been particularly aggressive with uh, female journalists and with journalists of color. Obviously, you tick both those boxes. Do you feel that there's truth to that? And, and what do you think that, again, says about this moment we're living through? I think the president wants to have an opponent and he wants to have a foil at all times. And whether or not that's going after me or going after Jonathan Carl of ABC or Peter Alexander of NBC, he just at times I think wants a fight, wants a punching bag. And as we get into the fall, he's gonna then turn to Joe Biden. He's gonna turn to the media that's been of course a long foil of his. So I think in some ways, I'm not sure if he's, if he's particularly picking on black women as much as he's particularly picking on anyone that he sees as a threat. Well, I really genuinely want to thank you uh, for bringing the integrity that you bring to those White House press briefings. We're really lucky to have journalists like you in the room. And thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Thanks so much for having me.